Hello, Garrett here with Boats.net, and today I'm going to talk about the lower unit on your outboard engine. Specifically, I'll use a cutaway model to show you what it does and how it works. If you're looking for genuine replacement parts for your lower unit, or you're looking to buy a whole new lower unit assembly, you'll find what you need in the lower casing one diagram on Boats.net. In a nutshell, the lower unit, to coin an automotive term, is where the rubber meets the road. It's where the power and rotation of the engine is transferred to the propeller to push your boat across the water. But there's a lot more that meets the eye. So let's head over to the stand and I can show you how it works. First thing we're gonna talk about is the drive shaft. This is what actually propels the forward and reverse gears that follow with the prop shaft. If you look towards the top, there's a, there, you know, it's splined around the top. This is what seats into the power head. As we work our way down the drive shaft, we make contact with the water pump. Water pump is a very important part to your outboard engine. It's what keeps everything cool. If it fails, it's gonna to lead to overheating and severe engine damage, and nobody wants that. I made a cutout for the lower unit. I also made a cutaway of the water pump to give you an idea exactly how it all goes together. First thing we'll talk about is the lower plate. This is what everything rests on top of. And above that is our actual impeller. This is what pushes the water through the system. And it's connected to, of course, the drive shaft. As I turn the drive shaft, you can see the impeller begin to spin inside the housing. Inside of this lower unit, there's a cavity that allows water to enter up into the bottom of the water pump housing. It enters from here, fills this channel up, and floods the inside chamber of the water pump housing. As your drive shaft spins, these impeller fins spin as well. And with this being full of water, what's it gonna do? It's gonna push the water around inside the housing and exit out of this tube. Once it leaves the tube, it flows through your engine, cooling it properly and preventing you from having any overheating or you know, catastrophic engine failure. Nobody wants that. Now, this is a maintenance item, which means it will wear out eventually. So Yamaha recommends to check and replace every 100 hours or once per year. Now, I run mine quite often, so I change it every 100 hours. You definitely want to keep an eye on this and replace it because you could be out on a Sunday afternoon with your family having a good grand old time and boom, all of a sudden your engine's overheating. Or you could be out in the ocean five miles out and it start overheating. That's not good because you're no longer at the top of the food chain at that point. And directly in front of the water pump housing, we have the shift shaft. This is what actually allows us to shift from forward to reverse gear. Okay, right now we're in the neutral position. As we, move, as we twist the shaft counterclockwise, it puts our engine in forward gear. And as the shaft turns clockwise, it shifts us into reverse gear. Now we're down here at the bottom of the gearbox. So let me show you exactly what all is inside. We have a race bearing, followed by your forward gear, your clutch dog, that's where your shift shaft engages to shift you from forward to reverse gear. Your reverse gear, and this whole section here is called the bearing carrier. And there's a couple bearings. There's a bearing in the front and the bearing towards the rear. That's what helps distribute the load on the prop shaft. And behind the bearing carrier, we have the housing ring. This is kind of what clamps everything back together. And lastly, we have our prop. Now the next thing I want to talk about is our forward reverse and pinion gear. Now if you look, if you notice, as the drive shaft spins, the forward and reverse gear spin along with the pinion gear. They're constantly in motion whenever the engine is idling or at, high, or at max RPM. It's constantly spinning. They're always engaged with each other. Now that you pretty much know the basics of how the forward and reverse gears interact with the pinion gear, let me show you exactly how it shifts from forward to reverse gear. In between our forward and reverse gear, we have our clutch dog. Our clutch dog is connected to our shift shaft. And as we turn our shift shaft left and right, our clutch dog moves accordingly. And on either side of the clutch dog, it has six fingers that actually line up with the forward gear and six fingers that line up with the reverse gear. As this slides left to right, they engage. And when they do that, it allows to drive that particular gear connected to the prop shaft, which in our case is forward and reverse. I'm going to show you, as we turn our shift shaft to the forward gear position, our fingers are engaged on the forward gear. When we shift in reverse, our clutch dog slides, 
and engages with the fingers on the reverse gear. Now, I'm going to show you exactly how this all works in motion. We're going to go ahead and select it into the forward gear. We'll spin our drive shaft. You can tell our clutch dog is spinning in the forward motion. Now, we'll shift it into reverse and spin our drive shaft, and you'll notice the clutch dog is spinning in the opposite direction now. Now, if you ever hear any grinding going on in your gearbox as you shift gears, nine times out of 10, that's gonna be your culprit. Because what happens is the fingers on either side of the clutch dog, over time, they begin to wear and round out. And once that happens, you're actually bouncing in and out of gear. And to prevent that from happening prematurely, always shift your engine at the lowest RPM possible, which also means you need to make sure your engine idle is set correctly on top of your shift and throttle cables. Because your shift and throttle cables, over time, they stretch, everything wears, that's inevitable. We can't do anything about that. But what we can do is make sure it's all maintained properly. Because what happens is if your shift cable is a little longer or shorter than your throttle cable, your engine's actually gonna idle up just a little bit before the shift engages. And when that happens, you're spinning faster than you need to be. The next thing I wanna talk about are shims. I know you've probably heard about them. Well, let me tell you exactly what they do. The whole purpose of a shim is to actually push out our gear faces on the forward and reverse gears, as well as the pinion gear, to give us a good mesh between the gears on our forward and reverse and our pinion gear. The shims go between each of the gears and they push the gears out. As you can tell, I don't have any shims in this assembly at the moment because I want to show you the importance of the shims. As you look, you can tell I can actually wiggle this reverse gear back and forth. That's not what we want. We want it to be rock solid because we want the, the mating surfaces of the pinion and the gear to have little to no movement at all. What that's going to do is going to be able to transfer power more efficiently and cause less wear. Now with all these moving components inside the gearbox, of course we're going to need some kind of lubrication. This entire section is constantly submerged in oil and we don't want any of that oil escaping or water getting into the system. That's where seals come into play. On your outboard engine, the lower unit, there's actually six points that keep water from getting in and oil escaping. Let's go over those. The first seals we'll talk about are the prop shaft seals. These seals keep water in from entering and oil escaping at the prop shaft, but they commonly go bad because this is a very exposed area for a seal whether it be fishing line get tangled in, sticks, or just regular debris. It's constantly spinning on this seal face, so they do tend to go out. On the bearing carrier, we have two O-rings. These are seal points as well. Inside of this chamber is actually where your exhaust exit out the back of the outboard. It flows down from the power head into this chamber and directly out through the prop. Our next spot is directly below the lower plate underneath the water pump. Right there. And our last sealing point is around our shift shaft. We have one, we have a seal directly around the shift shaft and there's an O-ring that runs around the outer perimeter of this housing. And the best way to keep these seal points in tip top shape is just doing your routine maintenance. Yamaha recommends to replace the gear lube every 100 hours. And as you replace it, you can get a good idea of what's going on inside the lower unit. Say so when you pull the drain plug and water comes out, automatically that tells me that we have a leak somewhere in the system. And it's going to be one of those six points that I described to you. That's an easy way to keep it in check. For the parts and supplies you need to keep the lower unit on your outboard working its best, remember to check out the lower casting one diagram on boats.net. Have any questions or comments? Leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you want to see something else get cut in half, Leave us a comment. We're always looking for suggestions. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more outboard repair videos just like this one. In the meantime, thanks for watching and have a great day.